The hints for this video, let me move back and tell you, for level one, the beginner level, we were talking about, my ice maker just made a really loud noise, goodness. with the Chirp YouTube channel. This is the third video, level three, the advanced level of playing with a child with autism outside. For level one, the beginner level, we talked about labeling things, modeling that language for our kids, and engaging in very fun ways. For the moderate level, last week's video, we talked about how to create circles of communication, back and forth communication. For level three, the advanced level, we want to emerge into the land of shared universe. We want to create an imaginary place with our kids. We want to be creative. We want to build shared environments, imaginary environments. So if we're in the backyard, I might ask, what do we want to play, house or hospital? And then together we decide how to play house or hospital. If my child has, says hospital, I might say, do you want to be the doctor or do you want to be the sick person? The child usually says the doctor, so I usually get to be the sick person, which is super fun, because I usually pretend I hit my head or I broke my leg. But then we have to decide, do we have a building? Or is this an outside hospital? Do we, what happened to me? How did I get hurt? <laughs> did I fall out of a tree? Did I get hit by a car? Did a dog bite me? We can talk about all these things at very deep levels at this more advanced phase in play skills. Of course, we can start out much more simply by hiding under a play structure and you can say to your kid, it's raining outside, I'm gonna stay inside. This is my house. And then maybe you can emerge out to go grocery shopping and then come back. Maybe you can emerge out to go to school and then come back. When your child goes out from under the play structure, say, where are you going? Are you going to the doctor or to the store? Are you gonna go to the zoo or to the park? You can start this whole process out by being imaginative yourself. Remember when you were a kid. I remember playing on a huge play structure with my brother and a bunch of other kids and I was a very imaginative child. And my favorite thing to do on the play structure was pretend we were on a ship in the middle of the ocean and nobody could get off into the sand because that was the ocean. And if they did fall off, we would have to rescue them, we have to throw them ropes, drag them back in. And we could see the fish, look, a dolphin, look, a whale. <laughs> and we could see other ships could come alongside us. We actually could crawl across the there was a bar and there were swings hanging off the bar. So if we could crawl across the bar, we could get to the other play set. And that was a ship that was tied to our ship. It was a really fun game. So you can use this game as your example if you like. Another thing that we played a lot when I was a child was Doctor Who. And of course, I'm not that young. And when I watched Doctor Who, it was all the original Doctor Whos not the fancy new violent ones, it was the old ones which were much more suitable for children. <laughs> and So we would get into a little enclosed space and then we would open the doors and it would be a new alien world that no one had ever seen before. So we would tell each other what we saw. I would say, I see an alien with eight arms and great big eyes that are up on stalks. What do you see? And then my brother would say, Usually, he pretended to be a dog because he just wanted to be a dog all the time. So he would just be down on the ground barking and running around on all fours. But if we didn't like the place, we could get back in our little 
room, close the door, and go to some other alien world. <laughs> or we could go back to Earth if we really wanted to. This is not very consistent with the actual plot of the show, which was that they really couldn't control where they were going so well because the travel machine, called the TARDIS, didn't work that well most of the time. And they just kind of randomly showed up. It always happened to be somewhere where there was a problem that the doctor needed to fix, though. So that was convenient. Look for what the child is interested in and make it more playful. Make it more imaginative. If the child wants to swing, pretend that you're pushing him off into space and he's an astronaut and ask him, are you going to the moon or are you going to Mars? I'm going to push you really hard. Where do you want to go? When he stops, ask him if he wants to get off and walk on Mars or if he wants to fly on and go to Jupiter. Just be creative. It, it, it does require something of us as adults to maintain a childlike level of creativity. It's not as easy as we get older. But playing with kids, I think, is one of the best ways to do this. It just it livens our lives up so much. So that is your goal at the advanced level of playing outside with kids. Make it more imaginatory. Create a shared universe. It doesn't have to be major. Just like I said, if you're pushing a kid on a swing, ask him if he wants to go to the moon or to Mars. Or tell him he's in a submarine and you're going to push him. Does he want to go to the coral reef or does he want to go see all the sharks, the shark cave? And then you can swim, you can push him, but then you can swim and you can get there too. And you can explore the shark cave together. Another option at the advanced level is to back off your engagement in the child's play and support the child playing with peers. This can be a little bit scary for children with autism, of course, because they don't interact typically at the same level that their neurotypical peers interact on. And sometimes they need a little bit of extra support and scaffolding because the peers are interacting at a social level here and our kids with autism aren't. Our kids with autism oftentimes need a scaffold so that they can interact at a higher level. We are usually that scaffold. So if the other kids are playing imaginary play and my child is just circling his finger in the dirt because the sand feels really cool, I might get his attention and say, they're going to space. Let's put on our helmets. Do you want to go on the swings to space or do you want to go on the slides to space? And so you can kind of support your child to play at a higher level. If it's not fun for your child, take it back down, let your child circle his finger in the dirt, but keep on trying to take your child's play just a little bit more complex. Make it a little bit more interactive, a little bit more interpersonal, a little more social, a little more imaginative, so that he doesn't get stuck in just doing what he's always done because it's what he always did. Because other kinds of play can also be fun, not just circling my finger in the sand. If you can support your child to play along with other kids, go for it. If it doesn't work out so well, back off and just engage with your kid yourself. Of course, you can always let your child just run around at the park. That's better than being inside all the time. But some of these strategies that we have talked about will not only get your child that movement that is so beneficial and the nature that is so beneficial, but it will also help with your child's social skills and communication skills and play skills. And it will probably help your child's sensory system too because there are so many different kinds of sensory experiences that happen outside. I hope that this little series was helpful for you and that you have a wonderful day. Please subscribe if you aren't already subscribed and like this video if you indeed did like it. I'll see you in my next video. Have a great day. Bye.